It's warfare to grasp what is happening to us. And we need to shatter this self-delusion that somehow if, as Obama says, we work hard enough and study hard enough, we can be one of them. Uh, the fact is the people who created the economic mess that we're in were the best educated people in the country, Larry Summers, former president of Harvard, and others. Uh, the issue is not education. The issue is greed. And I, unfortunately, had the experience of being shipped off to a private boarding school at the age of 10 as a scholarship student and lived, I was one of 16 kids on scholarship, and I lived among the super rich, and I watched them. Uh, and I think much of my uh, hatred of authority and my repugnance for the ruling elite comes from having been among them for so long. Yeah, people don't understand the elite schools, even at the high school level, right. that, that they get, the kids get excellent educations, that but it, they learn the whole culture of hundreds or thousands of years of how to rule. Right. And, and it's it, a deep, rich understanding of it. Not only that, but they, you know, the, and George Bush is a perfect example of that. Well, not so much a, an example of deep, rich understanding. No, of but of, of how, you know, affirmative action for the rich. Uh, and I came, certainly on my mother's side of the family, from you know, lower working class. I mean, people, my, one of my uncles lived in a trailer in Maine and certainly people with no means. And I would juxtapose the world I was in with that world. And uh, it was very clear that it wasn't about intelligence or aptitude. Uh, the fact is, if you're poor, you only get one chance. Uh, if you're wealthy, like Bush, you get chance after chance after chance after chance. So you're a C student at Andover and you go to Yale and you go to Harvard Business School and you're a wall from uh, your National Guard unit and you're a cokehead and it doesn't really matter. You don't even really have a job till you're 40 and you become president of the United States. So um, that was what was particularly insidious, how those small, tight, elite, oligarchic circles perpetuated themselves and promoted mediocrity because many of these people like Bush are very mediocre human beings uh, at the expense of the rest of us and how with money uh, they game the system. And of course now we live in an oligarchic state where we've been rendered utterly powerless uh, and our, the judiciary, the legislative, the executive branches all subservient to an oligarchic corporate elite um, and the press is owned by an oligarchic corporate elite, which makes sure that any critique of them uh, is never broadcast over the airwaves. It's not, it's not some like inherent evilness or something, but you are, you are brought up as a super rich or very rich in a culture, in a school, in a milieu where everyone's there to serve you. It's right. your right to be served. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very distasteful to see because... You know, I would go to the homes of friends of mine and watch, and let's remember their children, 11, 12 years old, ordering around adults, their servants, their nannies. Uh, and, I, and I begin that piece by talking about Fitzgerald, who uh, came from the Midwest to Princeton and went through much the experience that I went through. Uh, and uh, that apocryphal exchange, which didn't take place, but, but it does represent the difference between Hemingway and Fitzgerald, where... Uh, Fitzgerald at one point had written, but the story is that he said the rich aren't like you and I, and Hemingway is supposed to have quipped, yes, they have more money. Well, Hemingway, uh, like on many things, was wrong. Uh, the rich are different, uh, because when you have that much money, then human beings become disposable. Even friends and family become disposable and are replaced. And when the rich take absolute power, then the citizens become disposable, which is in essence what's happened. Um, there, there is a very callous indifference. I mean, these people, and C. Wright Mills wrote about this in The Power Elite, they're utterly cut off. I mean, the only people they ever meet who are members of the working class are people who work for them. They're gardeners or they're chauffeurs. Um, they, they live in self-encased bubbles. They have no real contact with reality. I mean, they don't even fly on commercial airlines. Uh, and yet they have absolute power. Now, that becomes very dangerous. Politically,